Some cables have these weird cylinders on them that are typically located near one end or even both ends of the cable. But what do these things actually do and how do they work? Let's find out. When you take a wire and make an electric current run through it, a magnetic field is created around the wire. But it's a very weak magnetic field. By coiling the wire, you can create a much stronger magnetic field. If you would then take a piece of ferromagnetic material, let's say steel, and wrap the coil around it, the steel becomes magnetic when you turn on the power. This is called magnetization. Magnetizing a piece of metal actually takes a little bit of energy. So, when you turn on the power, a small amount of energy is used to magnetize the piece of metal. If you'd connect the coil to an AC power supply, you'd get a very interesting situation. Here, at this point in time, as the voltage rises, the piece of metal is being magnetized. Here, the voltage drops, and so the metal is demagnetized. And then here, the voltage drops even further down below zero, so now the piece of metal is magnetized again, but now with the north and south pole facing in the opposite direction and then it's demagnetized again. As you can imagine, the higher the frequency of this alternating voltage, the more often the metal is going to be magnetized every second, therefore the more energy will be required. Keep this in mind as we move on. The cylinder that you find on cables is actually a small piece of ferrite wrapped around the cable. Ferrite is just like steel, a material that can be magnetized. The ferrite can be magnetized by the electricity that runs through the cable that it's wrapped around. The main goal of the ferrite is to deal with electromagnetic interference. High frequency radio signals emitted by things like cell phone towers can sometimes be picked up by cables, which is not what you want. If the cable is an audio cable, you can even hear the interference, and as you can hear, it does sound quite terrible. So, how does this piece of ferrite deal with the interference? Well, as I just mentioned, radio interference often consists of very high-frequency radio signals. When these very high-frequency signals pass through the bit of cable surrounded by the ferrite, the ferrite is going to be magnetized by the signal. But since the frequency of the signal is very high, this will take a lot of energy and therefore the magnetization process absorbs all of the energy of the interference so that it can't reach the speaker and our ears. The ferrite does not affect normal signals traveling through the cable since those have much lower frequencies. So basically a ferrite cylinder is a filter that lets low frequency signals pass through and cancels out very high frequency noise. So there you go. Now you know what these little cylinders on cables are and how they work. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.